welcome to Pure Hustle Podcast. I'm Mike. And it's Orlando, and we are in episode 17. 17. You ready to talk about some bad things? Bad things? <laughs> well, usually it's it's not good to have a, a, a kind of an episode where you just focus on the negative. So I'm hoping we can turn this one around. You know, but but I don't think it's negative to talk about how to avoid mistakes. That's okay. a positive. So we're still on this Q4 thing. Just because we thought it'd be relevant, right? We're trying to be real, be relevant, be reselling. That's right. So, right, we thought it'd be great to talk about avoiding mistakes during Q4. Now, I know a lot of this is going to be some of the stuff I ended up doing, <laughs> basically all my failures out there. But Mike's also encountered some things, too. So, And, and we've also seen other resellers yep. kind of drop the ball on things. So we kind of want to talk about this because, you know, this knowledge can very much help you when you're out on the field during this Q4. Yeah. Uh, failure is not failing. Wait, wait. We're doing, are you doing a quote? Failure now? is not oh losing. My. It's an opportunity to learn. I, I'm sure that's that's somebody's quote or something similar to it. Something like that. that was, yeah. But 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 honestly, I mean, if I you think about it. I can make a quote right now. Failure is the beginning of success. I don't think you made that up. I think I've heard that somewhere. Really? But, but if you did, congratulations. From the dome right here. It's pretty good. I don't, but uh, is it really is it really failure the beginning of success? You know, I've from from a lot of the books that I read and things that I've I've seen. I mean, think about it. You talk about growth mindset, right? Like that's kind of the idea with the the was it Carol? Uh, here's a Dweck. Dweck. No, actually, I was a, I was a vice principal. So yeah. yeah. So the growth mindset is basically. Do we need to get into this? I mean, yeah. the brain the brain is a muscle. Oh. And what well, used to be back in the day, if you had a certain IQ, you're stuck in that IQ. But now re- new research shows that your brain can actually be kind of worked out like the rest of your body, mm-hmm. right, mentally. And you can actually grow like in your ability to do certain things. Yeah, and the, the specific application of that is uh, there are those with what's called fixed mindset, which is um, they either have it or they don't. And so they're always trying to prove themselves and they're afraid to fail. And then there are people who recognize that there is that potential for growth. They have a growth mindset. And so they're not afraid to fail. They'll try things. And if they fail, they don't look at it as I've messed up. This proves I don't have it. But they look at it as, oh, well, I learned something. Let's try again. Yep. And they take those opportunities of failure to improve upon what they're doing. Exactly. So these mistakes we're going to be talking about today are, are sometimes mistakes we've made. That almost um, sounded like an educational podcast. That's that's it, This is an educational podcast. I know, but like... The educational one where people are going to be like, oh, we're in school again kind of deal. I don't think, I mean, I I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that there is this thirst out there that people have for like genuine learning. Like I feel like education no, no, system agree. has failed I so agree. many people and now people are wanting to know the things that they weren't taught in school. Like, and I think this is it, right? Like the day-to-day how to succeed. This is the stuff that you probably weren't taught in your your high school you were taught a lot of things, but probably not just the this how to deal with high failure. school teacher, by the way. No, it's true, right? Like, like this is the kind of stuff that that on a pen and paper exam on a math test, unless you're actually really thinking and learning, like what it means to succeed and fail and try in the real world, and that's what we're doing. Like, if you're a reseller, you're a hustler. Um, you probably are the kind of person who you're constantly trying to learn. You're constantly testing and failing and growing. Uh, and so I think there is a thirst out there for for some knowledge. No, I agree. And and one of the things I would like to expound upon on that, see, now we're selling all educational, <laughs> is the idea that, you know, as a reseller, you're only going to get better by learning from your failures. Like sometimes, and Mike and I will go back and forth on this, we'll buy stuff that was a complete fail. Mm-hmm. So we didn't make money on that item per se, but we you made paid money. for a lesson. We paid for our education. Yeah, you paid for a lesson. It's totally worth it. By the uh, way, that shirt, what? If you're not watching this on YouTube, he has a pretty sweet shirt with a bunch of fish yeah, and wine shirts. Fish, it's amazing. Is that a thrift store find? Are you gonna call me out on that? I just want to know. Like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've <laughs> never seen you wear a shirt like that before. So my wife has been trying to convince me to wear short sleeve shirts because I, on a day to day basis, for work, hide those guns. Yeah, that yeah, what you've yeah, been yeah. trying to do, and now I, she's like, let them out. I dr- I wear a shirt and tie, like a like a button up shirt and tie, and I've always felt like. Short sleeve shirt, especially when people wear ties with them. I hope I'm not offending anybody, but I've just never liked the look of it. No, that's like a like a you're a shop teacher. Or like, yeah, uh, I, I get it. Like so, I, I know. So when she said like you should no get, offense if you wear short sleeves with a tie, yeah, it's comfortable. But okay? she would say like you should wear short sleeve shirts, you know. And my thing was when people wear short sleeve shirts to be fancy, like that wasn't my fancy. Like my fancy was, you know, 
a sports coat on top of, you know, so um, to me, it just wasn't my thing, but I've been like, okay, like maybe I'll try it. And I was at a thrift store and I saw this shirt and it was really cool looking. So it's a wide shirt with it. a bunch of tropical fish on it. I love fish, by the way. So um, I, I saw this like, oh, this is cool. And it was a brand, um, a Cactus Man or something like that. I don't know if it was a good brand. So it wasn't something you would resell. That's why you kept it? No, no, it might be. It, it might be worth money, but I, I wanted to keep it because it was my size and I liked it. And then as I'm going through the rack, I found three other shirts by the same brand uh, that are different patterns of different, but all cactus man. So I'm assuming somebody just took their closet and they were some one, a couple of them had tags on them still. So I'm thinking they weren't yeah. even worn. Um, it was probably, you know, wife got them for her husband and he didn't like them and took them to the thrift store. Yes. But you still I like money them. though. You still made money because that's one less shirt that you have to pay exactly. for. Exactly. It. It's genius. There you go. Um, and then one more thing to tack on. I know we're, this is the <laughs> we longest even intro ever, uh, but, <clears throat> but learning mistakes, you said that uh, you have to learn from your own mistakes. My second quote of the week. Doom, Wait, doom, doom. What? I know. I, I, I'm not going to normally do two, but this you is You know, a people great have one. turned off the podcast by now, right? They have not. They're like, they've turned it up. They want to hear this. Oh, right. So, All right, go for it. So, maybe I've already done this one, okay. but um, uh, foolish people do not learn from their mistakes. Smart people learn from their mistakes, but wise people learn from others' mistakes. And I think that's what we're trying to do for you here is you can learn from your own mistakes, but if you can learn from our mistakes, or if I can learn from Orlando's mistakes, then that is much better. I don't have to make the mistake myself. It's very true. I've made a ton of them, and Mike has learned. I have. <laughs> That's good. All right. So Thank let's you talk for about the education. mistakes to avoid a Q4. Let's talk about not having capital. Mm. Have you encountered that yet? I know it's That's only, a very personal question. We're only a few days into Q4. But Are you asking about my how much money I have in the bank? No, no, I'm is not that... asking about uh, I'm just joking. Just, um, have you run into that? Uh, no, not yet. Um, it's, I've got the capital to be buying things, but there's going to come a point I know when there's a limit, right? There's a, there's an upper limit of how much I have until more money is coming in. And part of the Q4 thing is kind of long-term, long-term over the quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, so I might be buying now and stuff might not be selling for another month or two. So that's capital that's locked up. So you only have a limited supply to get into. So, um, I guess part of that is using that money on the right stuff to start with. Well, that and also, and we talked about this, I think, a few podcasts ago, is if you have stuff right now that you kind of like people are giving you offers on and they're not top dollar, but you're also low on capital, like now's the time to sell. Mm. Right. And, and because in the end, if you don't have capital and let's say there's this hot item mm. and you're in a store and they have like 20 of them and then you don't have the money, you're, you're, you're stuck. No, that's true. I, I, there's been a few items that I've, over the last couple of months, have gotten offers on that I've rejected. And then I get another offer on that same item that's the same that I've rejected already three times. And I'm like, sure, I'll take it. Because it's just been sitting there and I'd like to free up some some space and some capital for, for Q4. Yeah, and you got to think about that. In Q4, the velocity of sales will push you to sell with high, uh, uh, higher but lesser margins. Right. Right, you got to think about that. Like, you can't say I'm gonna hold out until I get 300% ROI. Maybe the best will be 50% ROI mm -hmm. because then you get that money from that sale and you just reinvest it in more items to sell at that 50% ROI. Right. So if you get a hundred items that you sell at 50% ROI in comparison, maybe 10 that you get at the hundred, 200, it's definitely worth it to you. Yeah. So throughout the year, it's it's you know we talked about fast nickel, slow dime. Uh, so it might be quality over mm -hmm. quantity uh, in Q4, at least from what I've been gathering, is there is a place for quantity. Um, I don't want to say over quality, but like like you said, lower profit margins, lower ROI, but in higher amounts, the turnover is going to be much quicker. Um, and so it kind of makes up for that. And if you're It's if fast you, nickel right now. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I would say if by November you have items that you've been holding out on and it's like December 1st, Right. And, you know, you probably by now you've already listened to this podcast and it's because this podcast is re, is going to be released towards the end of October. You got you got to sell that. Yep. Don't go. Oh, what if somebody on December 15th wants it, mm. you know, for Christmas? Like you can't take that gamble because that's money that you've tied up into into all your items. And, and especially if you're trying to do the Amazon game, like you have no idea. Like there could be a major fluctuation that happens. 
I talk about this, and I said this in the last podcast. There are some hot toys that sell better in October than they will mm. at the end of November, December. And you you don't want to run the risk of a distributor or a manufacturer recognizing that this, their toy is selling a lot, and they put in a huge shipment together, and it shows up in the States. Oh, last minute. Last minute, and then you're stuck. Yeah. And all that capital that you could have used to buy maybe other items is no longer there for you. Yeah. So think about that. you got to have that capital constantly reinvesting during Q4. And obviously, the more you start with, the better off you're going to be. But if if, it, if you start with a smaller amount, then, yeah, you've got a fast nickel. Got a I, fast I nickel completely it. agree. You need that quick. capital. And, and real quick before we end that, be careful because, you know, sometimes PayPal will offer you that capital loan. Have you seen? Have you gotten one of those? Not or yet. A notice? So PayPal offers where they'll give you a certain loan, and it's a pretty good deal. And they, they deduct a certain percentage out of the money you make on each mm. sale to pay that off. The danger is, you know, with loans or with using credit cards, you know, what if you're new and you really don't know? Yeah, you fail. See, I'm really big on um, like the Dave Ramsey model of, of trying to be debt free. So I know there comes a place in business where it's worth taking out a loan to, to mm-hmm. take on more, but I'd rather, I'd rather be debt free um, and have a smaller amount to start with and, and potentially maybe maybe I lose that gamble and I could have made a ton of money if I'd have taken out a loan. But um, you know, paying that interest back and that that chance that you you were wrong about an item. If I'm wrong now, it's not the end of the world. If I take out a fifty thousand dollar loan to buy a bunch of inventory mm-hmm. and I'm wrong, I might as well have gone and gambled it in Vegas, right? No, and you gotta find out where you're comfortable. You know, last year I wish I spent triple the money that I was mm. spending, you know, and I probably would have made Triple the money. Yep. This year, I'm aiming towards that. But, you know, I, I'm getting kind of uncomfortable, yeah. right? Because I, I'm not a big fan of credit. I mean, I've been debt free through Dave Ramsey's program, and it's been incredible. And and to think that if Q4 fails, it's the end of December, mm. and I'm riddled with debt, like, that was terrible. Yeah. So you just, be, just be wise about that. All right, tell me about what toys you're looking for. Have you been looking for the hot toys? Tell me, I want the exact UPC and name. Yeah, what aisle number it is and yeah. everything. Yeah, um, no, I'm not doing that, obviously. Uh, but, but yeah, so. But are you looking for the hot toys? You know, part of what I'm doing is looking for the hot toys, uh, but I, I'm trying to be wise on how I'm doing that, and and it's it's just putting feelers out with people that I know that have kids and just figuring out what it is that, that they're interested in. Is kind of how I've been doing research because I have no way of knowing what's hot toys, but but I do know that there are certain things that are definitely marketed more as like this is going to be the hot toy. Okay, and, and I, I you know we're talking about mistakes, right? Right. And I will say one of the mistakes I did during my first Q4 and a little bit of the Q4 last year was that I constantly was looking for this hot toy. Mm. Right. So you know, two years ago the hot toy was Pie Face. You remember Pie right. Face? Right. Yep. Yep. Right, I mean, there were some five faces going for close to a hundred bucks. Holy cow! Uh, I mean, when it was peaking, right? I mean, generally, it was like 50, 60 bucks. But the crazy thing about it was that like people spent all this time, right? So they literally would go from Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, over and over again, and they may have spent the entire day and only picked up maybe ten of them, instead of going in seeing that that's it's not there, and then looking for other items that again might have a lower ROI, but hey, at least they're not wasting their time because time's money too. Well, time, and then think about like all the items they missed out. Remember how, you know, there's about 50,000, right, lower rank toys, right? Then there's the 100,000, right? So if you're getting toys from zero to 100,000, chances are they're going to sell during Q4. Mm. That's where they're ranked on Amazon, right? Even if you sell them on eBay, the fact that they're ranked low on Amazon means they're probably going to sell on eBay also. Right. And what I find a lot of people doing, and I've seen resellers do this, that they're just hunting. They're just hunting mm-hmm. for the certain toy. And it puts them in a bad place. Now, I get it. If it's like October, and you're kind of hedging your bets and hoping to get that one toy, that's all good. But if it's like November and December, like you got to just think about stuff that's going to sell. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, that comes down to partly capital, right? Like if, if you're, if you've ran out of capital and you only have enough to get one or two of the hot toys, then maybe it's worth hunting for that because it has the higher mm-hmm. ROI. But but if uh, if you've got the capital, you know, if you can fill up your cart every chance you get I with agree. a diversified amount of, 
of, of items. That, that's huge. And I will tell you, there's there's one toy. I've shared with you a couple of things that I've picked up, but one I haven't shared with you. And I it doesn't matter anymore because it doesn't it's not being sold anymore, which is even better. That's nice for you. I know, but I picked up a ton of these in the summer. They're they're being clearanced out at different stores, and this is probably ranked. I think it's ranked like somewhere in the thirty thousands last year. But, but I sold them all. They they went for I think eleven or twelve, mm. and I sold them for. I think I told you about this one. I think they, and they were selling for like thirty to fifty. Nice. Always, over and over and over and over and over again. So, and you know what? No one was like racing to get to this toy, hmm. right? For the most part, I I feel like in San you Diego, you had the market on it. I was the only person picking these up because I'd go and there'd be like ten of them, and I'd take them. And, and the, the stupid part was, I go to certain stores. I'm like, who got? Oh wait, that was me. <laughs> I've already got them here. I already got them. So you know, I better map this out better. But just just think about. Don't think about just the hot toys. Right, because you could have another. Do we need to go down this road again? Nope. No, we don't need to mention those toys anymore. The fingerlings. Oh. We're going to start the, calling you the, the Bellas. fingerling man. I got baned. You got baned. Hardcore baned. You baned to, yourself. That sounded terrible right there. You got to explain what baned means. I think we already talked about it on one podcast, but it's a great story. So here we go. So uh, Orlando and I and some friends were... Uh, at a at a conference a couple of years ago, and you guys know I love board games. Like, that's my life. So I bring all these board games, um, and for those of you guys who have played Love Letter, incredible game, very simple to play, easy, I still, interesting. What, love Letter, what a terrible name. It's a wonderful name. Okay. It's a wonderful game, and right. I love it. So we're Hopefully playing... we don't get lost in your game here. Oh, no, no, we'll make it quick. Okay. So we got Love Letter. Um, love Letter has many different editions. It's all the exact same rules, but different, like, card themes. So we were playing a Batman-themed love letter game. And the, the long story short is there's a, a card, which is Bane from Batman. And the idea behind the card is if you have another card, you can only have two cards in your hand. If your other card is a really, really high card, you use Bane to try and knock another player out of the game. But you only do that if you have a high card in your hand. It's got to be like you know for sure you, you're going to win this because uh, you don't know what anybody else has. And so Orlando, I don't know what he was doing. If he was like off in eBay world or wasn't paying attention. Probably, probably taking an offer yeah. and making some money. So he decides to play Bane and we're like, oh man, like he must got a good card. And so he like shows his card to somebody and he had the lowest ranked card you can have. <laughs> Gets himself out of the game. Like there's no way he could have possibly won playing this card that's how I roll. I'm a, there's I, no I try like to bluff people. it was the there's no bluffing. Like you were going to lose. Like you literally committed suicide in the game, and he baned himself. Like you tried to bane other people. He baned himself, and you know every time Orlando fails now, it's a bane. It's a bane. So with that being said, we want to introduce a new word to the reselling community that we want you to hashtag. Hashtag baned. Baned. So if something goes wrong. Okay, so let's say, you know, you go to a store and you get denied buying something or you buy a bad item or there's something that's flawed or whatever it is. Tag us. And then hashtag, hashtag baned. baned. And you could say, Puroso Podcast, I got baned. Yeah, you want to avoid being baned as much as you can. Uh, but, you know, especially don't bane yourself. Yeah, so we're going to make sure we introduce this to our own Insta feeds and Insta stories. But hey, baned. Yeah. It's a new word. Way better than fail. Yeah, you just don't want to get baned. Yeah, don't get baned. Okay, so uh, do you think we're clear about that? I think so. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to see you guys. I'd love to see you guys hashtag bane. Hashtag baned. And Bane. tag us. So on Twitter at Pure Hustle Cast. On Instagram, Pure Hustle Podcast. On YouTube, if you subscribe, like, and if you put in the comments, like, you got baned. Oof. It's all good. Yeah, so we've got the hustle of the week and then the bane of the week. Right? Or if you want, <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to call us at 619-738-1170. That's 619-738-1170. You can say, Mike and Orlando, I got baned. Yeah, give us your baned story. I don't know, but that would make a really negative podcast. You know, but again, you learn from mistakes, We're right? Being we'd real, love to right? hear from your mistakes. We're being real. Got to be real and relevant and while reselling. you're reselling. Yeah, there you go. All right, so don't get baned. Yeah, don't do it. All right. So that part of that is holding on to items for too long. Yeah, and I haven't done that, but you sure have. So I and I, I still I worry that I am right now. 
Like there are toys right now that I've picked up that are selling for about 20 bucks and they're selling for 40. Now, ROI isn't that great, right? We take our Amazon fees, maybe making seven bucks each on these, mm. right? But if I sell 50 of them, right, that's $350. So I, I'm I'm like, ah, no, I want that $50 per item. Mm. Because Amazon, nickel. Amazon keeps selling out, but I have that capital. But that, if I think about it, it's only that's an extra ten dollars. So that'd be an extra five hundred. So mm. I don't know. You think I'll get baned? You might get baned on that. See, oh, you're gonna end up with another closet full of fingerlings. Oh, we I need to do. We those. need to. We need to do a video at Orlando's house where we just like open up a closet and fingerlings are falling out. Do you yeah. have them all named? I was thinking like a no. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like going out on a field and like taking them out somehow. Like like a office space style where you just like take them out and like gangster in the yeah. back, in the back. I don't know, man. I just those things. Ah, oh. but you know it's funny. I almost picked up a fingerling today too. Again, <laughs> we've had this conversation. Orlando. There's something about them. Like I go, man, maybe that will still be a hot seller. Hey, if you guys have fingerlings laying around, mail them to Orlando. He collects them. No, he doesn't want to no, admit it, but he no. loves, like, he just wants more of them. He's got I just them don't hanging know what it is, but I keep, mirror of his car. Maybe it's because I keep going. There's still hope. There's still hope. It's like he continues to bane himself over and over. I know. I know. All right. But, hey, be careful. And I'm not just talking about toys. We're talking about, you know, think about if you get an offer on an item that you have not sold in a long time. Like, if you get it during Q4, that's probably the time to sell it. It's not going to sell again. Yeah. Would you agree? I don't know. It's my first Q4. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Talk about burning bridges. Have you burned any bridges? Um, I don't think I've burnt any, like, long-term bridges, but but there's maybe been a couple of times at garage sales where, you okay. know, I've I've things didn't work out, and it's like, okay, like, this person and I are not going to work together anymore, so I leave. But I haven't, like, had – I haven't – luckily, I haven't burned, like, a bridge at like a thrift store that I use regularly or a, a retail store that I, I do. But let's hear about how you've burned some bridges. <laughs> you know, he, I just hear one of them, like well, your best one. No, I haven't burned a lot of bridges. You know, it, it was funny. Last Q4, I was treated like royalty by Walmart. That's kind of crazy. So Walmart's nuts. Can I tell you during, Q, during Black Friday? It's crazy. Like, I've seen the videos. You, you need to go, you know, you need to be in there. Like, Especially, like, in certain parts of El Cajon, like, in San Diego. Like, it's like, I've seen people rumble in front of me over toys. You bring your brass knuckles when you go shopping? No, like, around. literally on the ground. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> so, and I'll never forget, like, last Q4, Black Friday, I was going, I was grabbing these toys, and there would be moms just, like, elbowing me out the way. And, like, I'm like, do I elbow back? Like, what do I do here? <laughs> do and, I elbow back? Well, okay. It's like episode okay. 13 all it over It crossed again. my mind, okay? <laughs> I didn't do it. I just, like, what in the, like, seriously? No, granted, I was going after stuff, too, so right. I get that. I mean, then you hear this, you hear all the plastic wrapping. Have you heard the plastic wrapping being ripped? No. Dude, it's, like, the most intense like sound. people are opening up. Yeah, because they're all they're all like wrapped in. Uh, oh, in plastic right, wrap. right, right. Yeah, right. And so when they kind of open it, and certain WalMarts last year, they didn't have like lines. It was just like you stand up next to it, and when it's time to go, they just cut the rope and you just went after stuff. Ooh. And uh, I'll never forget, I ended up getting I think three cartloads, and <laughs> this is kind of crazy. I got I purposely bought bungee cords. Mm. And I bungee corded all three cars together. Right? So I mean, nice. <laughs> you have to understand, I was a vice principal so at this point like, in time. Like so I'm like, what families are the... watching me? <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, you know, it was. So I bungee corded three cars and I loaded up those cars. So I had it kind of down. Like I was able to maneuver all three cars. And maybe that could be a good idea if you're going to, you know, Grab stuff on that would be friend. great. A how-to video, how to how to connect three cards together and shop more <laughs> effectively. It was awesome. And you know what Walmart did though? They got their employees and they cleared the way and they let me walk all the way to the front. They gave me my own register and they rang me up. I don't know if it was that they were treating you like royalty or they wanted you out of the store so they can get more customers through. Maybe. but They were like, this guy's obnoxious. But, Somebody get him out of here. But the crazy thing about it was like, I saw other resellers. I'm like, late. And I was just, I paid That's up awesome. and I was off to the next store. 
And, you know, part of that was I never burned bridges. Like, mm. I made sure, you know, because I got there and you had to wait like two or three hours before, you know, it was open. Like, mm. you could be in the store and they had rules like you couldn't be by the toys. Like, you had to be constantly moving. Right. So I literally, I think I walked like two or three miles in the same electronics area <laughs> before. So that's, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do, man. It's Q4. And I say no game. And I, <laughs> I wasn't a jerk, but there are other people that were in their face like, I ain't moving. Why do I got to move? Blah, 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 blah. We're buying fingerlings. Say no <laughs> joke. This is real life. Watch out for them Hatchimals, yo. So anyways, so people were like being rude. And those managers were like, you know what? You either need to leave the store or you're going to have to wait till all these people get in front of you. And what do you do? It's a private business. Right. Right. And sometimes like Walmart at this one store, they they hired extra security. Mm. And so, you know, people burn bridges like they could have been cordial. They could have been nice. They could have just followed the rules and they would have been OK. And they would have been treated like royalty to the front of the red store. Yeah. that And that's the thing is there's times when people don't treat you right or you've been wronged in a situation. You've been banned. Uh, it, yeah. Where, you know, you just get banned by whatever's going on. But the reality is. You're never going to win somebody over by having a blow up. Like you just aren't. Like if you start yelling at the employees because you think that they're not giving you whatever that you should have gotten, and you might be in the right, but you're not going to win that argument. They're not going to say, "Oh, you're right, sir. Thank you for for humiliating me and being rude to me. Let me now <laughs> give you, you the deal that me. you." I I appreciate. Yeah, that. like you're never going to win that, but you there's a chance that when you are polite and kind, you might win that one. And maybe you don't, but you weren't going to, you didn't lose anything by trying, right? And you get to feel better about yourself because you're a decent human being. There you go. Be a decent human being. You had a quote about flies and honey or something? Yeah, I'm sure it's a, what is it? You, you, you catch more flies with honey, which. There you go. Or you catch more bees with honey. That's what, that's the actual quote, which is bizarre because honey, bees make honey. They don't like go to honey. <laughs> well, but don't you make maybe up these it's, quotes? Maybe it's, I don't make up these quotes. <laughs> okay. I'm I just checking. Just maybe checking. it's you catch more bears with honey, but I don't know why you want bears oh. either. No, I wouldn't want them to catch any bears. Yeah. Not, no, I think not it's totally. bees. We'll have to look that one up. It's, either you know, way. Whatever it is, I've listen, never agreed with it. It's dumb, but I agree with the concept. Don't burn bridges. Because, again, you're probably going to want to go back to the store, especially if it's Q4. You're probably going to be there multiple times. So it's best not to cause a fuss. Yeah, bring in cupcakes. Give the cupcakes to the workers. Okay. <laughs> I guess you can. It's the shirt. The shirt is changing, Mike. All right. Let's talk about – we've talked about sharing too much. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about that one a lot. Don't no, share but, too but much, no, guys. No, Come but, on. But no. here, 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 let me take it a share step. Share the right stuff. Let me take it a step further. So today I was at a store, and I opened my trunk, and it was full of one item, mm. like, to the brim. Mm. And somebody saw it. And somebody saw it. Ooh. And they came up to me, and they're like, hey, so is there a sale going on? And I'm like, no. And oh, then they're man. like, so what are you going to do with these? And I'm like... I have lots of nieces and nephews. Yeah. Well, people did approach me today. They're like, so you work at Children's Center or something? <laughs> and what I've learned is awkward silence is the best answer. Just stare. Well, <laughs> you just smile at them. You just smile. Really big. <laughs> They'll walk away. No, but that's what I did that a few times today because this is the light I always get. Oh, starting Christmas early, huh? I get that all the time and I go, yup. And I just keep rolling. Well, it's true. It is true. You are. It's true. Somebody else's Christmas. So this guy, like, I don't know what his deal was. He wasn't a reseller. Like, I think his car was broken down. And he just saw these items, and he's kind of like, hey, what are these for? And I said, well, maybe these will be the hot toy. So I'm just starting early. And so, then he took a picture and posted it on Facebook, and now everybody knows. Well, that's my fear. Like, but you can't get around it. No. Right? If you're, in, like, in a Walmart and you have, like, two or three carts of the same item, like, it's mm. pretty obvious, you know, you're not, like, you know, the saint that's going to go drive down to the Y and, like, yeah. donate all these. So, but... Be careful. You, you just, yeah, you got to be careful because what I've noticed is I, I actually had an employee at Walmart one time go, huh, so what app do you use to find out what the prices are? And they go, oh, man, no, we're not going down this road. So 
I told her the Amazon app. I didn't tell her the Amazon seller app. Mm. Is that wrong? Was that wrong? You what you could have done. Well, I know I felt this like was a long time ago, spy. right? Like I had so what you could do is you can give covert. her the Pure Hustle podcast uh, business card and say, go ahead and start at episode one. Once you're caught up, you'll understand how this works. Uh, there, you know what? That was That's genius. We should have a card, a reselling card. If anybody asks questions, question, do you have goes, questions about what I'm doing? <laughs> start in episode one. There you go. And listen to the end. Start there at the beginning, go. end at the end, and you will Speaking understand. Speaking of our earlier episodes, we need some love on those. Like, I think right now a lot of people are listening to our most recent ones, but hey, there's some good stuff. Not saying we're, we are not gurus, right? We're not gurus? N- not yet. No, not, we're not. I'd like to be at some point. No, no. We're never going to be gurus. Maybe I'm using close. the word guru wrong. No, there's just so I just much... want to be helpful. <laughs> I want to be a helpful individual. There's just so much to learn. So I want to encourage you all, if you haven't listened to our, our earlier podcast, go back, listen to some of them, G- write some awesome reviews, you know, share the knowledge. All right. So share what's appropriate. And and you know what? I, I will say I did get perturbed the other day on Instagram. Somebody shared something they shouldn't have? Yeah, it killed me. Like, and, and I don't think this was ill-intentioned at mm. all. You know, the guy's like, yeah, I'm hustling, blah, 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 blah. And, and he showed, like, all these goods from Target that I just picked up, like, four days oh, ago man. on clearance. Now, I know that the market's going to get flooded. I'm like, dude, use the blur. Yeah. Like, blur it. Like, because if I was I was one of the people that was perturbed, I'm sure there's plenty of other resellers that are like, dude, don't do that. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Should that be one of our shirts? Like, don't do it. Don't, a podcast. don't like Wait, the no, opposite of Nike instead of just do it don't do it and then in small writing share B- which is super <laughs> ironic because like 100% of what we do on this podcast is just share information with people yeah but we don't we don't share like direct specific info we share people how to get to it we show pe- share people how to share it but you know maybe maybe one day business. maybe one day like once we you know get like I don't know Patreon or something going on we have like a small net group of people that are like in the inner circle. We all work together, and there could no, be like ten of us, no, and all that, ten no. of us no. like no, no, share no. Mike, information. Mike, stop. No, we are here. Just kidding. We are here to help you all. Okay. Now, some big companies would like to sponsor us. I'm all good with that. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So you know, Goodwill, Target. You know, we love you. We're here for you. Hey, maybe we can change people's opinion. There you go. That's where we are. PR for Target. That's right. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right, last one we want to talk about. Well, not the last one, but taking a break. Which is something I really feel like I need right now. But you're right, taking a break would be a huge mistake. I I think it is. I I remember last year, there were certain times where I just just was like, you know what, I'm going to just take a couple days off Mm. and recharge and come back. But man, in retrospect, like at the end of December, I'm like, Oh, I don't know how many thousands of dollars I lost those mm. two days. And I get it. Like, you know, everybody talks about, you know, self-love and taking care of yourself right. and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Like October through December 18, when you send in, and maybe December 18 is too late to send in that last FBA shipment. But from now, October 1st through that time, no breaks. Like, I get it. Spend time with your family, yep. work-life balance. If, but there's ever a time you hustle like there's no tomorrow, it's now. Yeah. And, and realistically, and I, again, this guy might be wrong. I might be wrong on this because I'm, I'm really big on, on taking each day like a day off to kind of recharge and, and refocus and all of that. Um, but one of the things that I heard somebody say or I read in a book at one point was uh, people like to think like, oh, if they could just take a vacation, that like that would – help them recharge and then be able to be better when they get back. Uh, and his comment was most people can't afford a long enough vaca- vacation to really recharge. Cause it takes like over a month for you to really clear everything else out. Really? Yeah. And so like, if you wow. just take a week off, like, and you get back to it, like you might feel a little bit better for the first half hour of work, but then you're back into the same stress, the same, like you haven't really decompressed. So taking a day off, taking a few days off in order to decompress really isn't enough time to decompress anyways. It's not going to make a huge difference in the long run. And and everybody, you know your own, you know yourself, right? Like some people need more sleep than others. And you know, like if I don't get 10 hours of sleep, I can't function. Other people can get by on five hours of sleep. So obviously we're not telling you work yourself to death, but but 
probably taking some time off isn't going to help you tons and it'll probably hurt you a lot. Yeah. And, and again, we're looking from the perspective that, you know, this is Q4. This could be a game changer for a lot of you, right? It could level up your standard of living. And you know what? Maybe two, three years down the road when things are better for you financially, maybe that's the time to take a break. Yeah. Once to go back to Dave Ramsey. Well, I was going to go Gary V on you, but. Oh, well, give me the Gary V. No, Gary V is very clear. Like, you work and you work and you work and you work and you work. And a lot of people are opposed to that. But, you know, whatever it is you're doing, in order for it to build up to something, like, you can't stop. Yep. Like, you have to hustle. And I would say in this reselling game, like, there comes a place where you build a pipeline. Like, right now, I'm in a comfortable place where I'm still going to get sales. If I didn't hustle as hard as I'm hustling right now, I think I'd still be okay. But, man, I know that in these next three months, I can definitely change my financial status. And then, you know, for me and my boy, I'm even planning maybe going to, like, New York for a few days yep. when it's all said and done, right? And how much better will that trip be knowing that I have extra that I can spend or, you know, we can take different trips than if I took a break and I just went somewhere local and mm. then come December, it's like, ah, I don't know if I could do that trip yep. anymore. Yep. No, it's true. And, and you know, to go back to the, the, the Dave Ramsey quote, like his little saying that he likes to give is, live like nobody else today so that tomorrow you can live like nobody else. That's right? true. And kind of the concept is work harder today than anybody else is working, save, budget, do all the things that nobody else is doing. So that way tomorrow, and by tomorrow might be five years down the road, you can take that month off and it's not going to hurt you because you're out of debt and you've got a ton of money coming in because of the work you're putting in today. I agree. So you got to, and, and I know this is counter intuitive to a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people out there that are pushing against this hustle mode, but I, I don't know. I just, I remember the last few Q4s, like if I wish I had turned that hustle mode like on like never before yep. and then taking a break, you know, after December 18. And that's when you can kind of relax with the family and, and you have, you know, money coming in. Yep. And, and here's the thing, if you think about it, um, just about anybody who's successful, think of any successful individual that's out there Warren Buffett, Oprah, right? Like anybody who's like had success and built something, Gary Vee, they have the same 24 hours that you have, right? So the question is just how are they spending that 24 hours versus how are you spending it? And of course, everybody starts at a different place. Not everybody starts, you know, on the the 20 yard line. Sometimes you start further back and you have to work harder to get there, but, but you still have the same amount of time. That's a great equalizer. And so if you're spending... If you're spending three hours a day watching TV, and don't get me wrong, like when there's certain shows come out, like there's times I want to binge watch, but now's not the time. And honestly, if you want to... Or binge, uh, binge watch while you're putting together shipments or making listings. Yeah, like, be, be wise with your time, right? Like you've got to, you've got 24 hours, right? You have 24 hours and that's it. Every day, 24 hours. So use them to the best you can possibly use them and ask yourself, where, where am I letting time slip here? What, how can I be sourcing, listing, researching? Because that's a big part of it too. Not just researching items you have, but but researching what is the items that I should be buying. That's a great that's a great point. You know, last year, what really changed things for me is I would spend probably an hour to two hours every single night during Q4 researching items. Mm. And so the next day, I knew exactly what I needed to get. And it wasn't that every night I had to find new items to get. I just was looking at patterns and trends. Right. And that that was huge. And, you know, especially now that there isn't a Toys R Us, it's going to be even more important, mm. you know, to see those patterns and trends and what toys to grab. So, yeah, I agree with you, Mike. Like, you got to be constantly hustling throughout the day. And it doesn't mean that you're always sourcing. It doesn't mean you're always packing. But there has to be something related to leveling up your Q4. Yep. Whether it's listening to an audio book, listening to a podcast, sourcing, listing, researching or spending quality time with your family, right? Turn off the TV, spend the time with the family when you have it, and then when the kids go to bed, get to listing. Yep, I agree. Don't take time I off. Agree. So, yeah, you're not technically taking time off. You're just making, you know, your family a priority, but you're saying, hey, later on this evening, I'm going to keep hustling, right? Yep. Not a single day off till the 18th. I, th I think we're extreme. You know, maybe a little bit, but but I don't know if there's anybody who's ever been – super successful that hasn't had to be extreme and sacrifice. Yeah, I agree. And so 
we could be wrong and not everybody who sacrifices succeeds. Right. But, but I don't think you succeed unless you do sacrifice. So I'm willing to do that. All right. So this Q4, right. I think we were very clear. No breaks. Hustle, 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 hustle. All right. So a few things. Like, let's recap it real quick. Right. Make sure you have the capital. Make sure you're not only looking for the high items. Don't hold on to fingerlings too long. <laughs> don't get baned. Don't get baned. Make sure you're not burning bridges, network, establish your relationships, right? Be careful what you share. Don't yeah. bane the whole reselling community. And keep a blanket in your car to cover up items. You know, I thought about that today. It, it would be a lot better than me doing the blurring. You see the blurring I do on yeah. Insta Stories? No, you should do that. I, I do that with my camera equipment, so you should do that with your... That'd probably be a better idea. Yeah. And then, hey, hustle, right? This Q4, think about it as this is your opportunity to change your standard of living like never before. Right, like never before, right? And think about it with the technology that you have, with being able to look at comps on eBay, rankings on Amazon. There's no better time to take calculated guesses and put in the work and make those profits. Yeah, and it's time to prove: Are you a pure hustler? There we go. So on that note, make sure to be real, be relevant, be reselling. Peace. Peace.